Hey everyone, my name is Marissa. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm bringing to you 1960s yellow school bus realness inspired by Lisa Eldridge's most recent yellow makeup tutorial. She did a whole yellow eye look and so this is how I would wear yellow eyeshadow. Priming my face with Smashbox Primer Water, eyes with the 24 hour shadow primer, and then under eyes with their hydrating under eye primer which gives a cooling tightening effect under the eyes. It's basically kind of like putting those cold spoons under your eyes, but in a product. Then I'm going in with the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. I'm gonna be putting that where I need it the most, and then doing an all over buffing motion with the Marc Jacobs The Face 3 brush, which I love so much for an all over face color. I really love the finish of this because it's medium to full coverage, but it still gives more of like a dewy skin-like finish that I find not all full coverage foundations can offer to you. For contour, cream contour, I'm going with something a little different. These are the CC Contouring and Highlighting Sticks from The Face Shop. I love the contouring shades from The Face Shop because the actual contour is like an olivey, almost ashy shade, which is perfect for pale skin. I've been laying everything down um, and then blending it out with the number 90 brush from Sephora Pro Collection. I've actually been loving that as a combination with another brush that you'll see coming up, the number 66 brush. Um, they just give a beautiful seamless blend. Now for highlight, I'm basically just going over where I put the foundation in the first place, but this is going to stay there. I'm packing it down with that number 66 brush from Sephora Pro Collection, um, and it's just a little bit lighter than my face, so it brings light to the center of the face. Now going in with the Lorac Pro Contour Kit. Beige highlight, I'm gonna be patting that on the face. This product is also an excellent example of why matte rubberized packaging should not be used for powder products because that palette was dusty, to say the least. Um, but I'm patting it in so that I preserve the concentration of the coverage. Then I'm going in with the light contour from the same palette and I'm going to be blending in a contour and I find that the combination of this more ready brown shade mixed with the um, ashy tone gives a really nice dimensional finish to my contour. Then going in with these two benefit products, the Cabral, which is the basically the answer to the Anastasia dip brow pomade, I didn't say that, um, and the 3D brow tones, which is supposed to be like highlights for your brows, but I use it as a brow gel. Going in with the Urban Decay Lip Love, because I forgot to put on some lip balm. And then I'm gonna be taking the Makeup Forever Aqua XL Eye Pencil. You guys have seen me use the black one a million times. I use it basically every time I do my makeup. But what I basically haven't said is that they have so many different shades of this eye pencil, and they're all really good. So I'm using this Daisy shade here, and putting in this shape, where I want all of my yellow to go. Taking the yellow from the Covershop palette from Smashbox, the palette is called Bold, um, and then just taking my Tweezerman shader brush and packing the shadow on top, and it's easy as that. The shadow isn't gonna appear as intense anywhere that you put it that doesn't have the eyeliner underneath, so it actually makes it way easier to lay down the color and get a really intense finish immediately. Now how I draw that is I do a basically rainbow semicircle on the lid, and then I connect that to lining the lower lash line, draw a diagonal line out towards the end of my brow, connect them, and then fill in the center. It's really easy, and like I said, look at that color payoff when you pack it on top. It's probably the easiest way I've figured out how, so far how to do a cut crease, but making it really symmetrical is important. So you can always go back in, um, with the pencil and then go over top again with the shadow just to get it just right. I'm taking the contour shade from the Shape Matters palette as well as this dark brown and I'm gonna lay a transition shade. Lisa Eldridge did this in her video as well. It, to me, it makes it look a little bit more natural. Um, I mean, as natural as putting yellow on your eyeballs can. Um, but it also creates more of like a dimensional, like a more of a polished finish to the look that I really like. Um, and then I'm going to be adding more depth to the crease just to really cut it out there with that dark brown with an angled liner brush before blending it so that it looks really seamless. Um, that's the name of the game when it comes to my type of blending. Next, I'm going in with the Rimmel Scandalize Waterproof Eyeliner in Nude and I'm going to be putting that in the lower waterline before going in with the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper. I don't know what I was doing without this, honestly. Like, I I apologize for whatever I said, if I ever spoke ill of it. It is the best liner, the only fault 
that I can find is that it dries out really fast, which is probably the reason why I didn't buy it again the first time, but I can't fault how good it is um, at giving a great line. Then I'm taking the TARDIS mascara, which I got last year at Gen Beauty, but completely forgot about, and it's fine um, because I'm just going in with lashes. Uh, I'll have to give the mascara a little bit more of a chance later, but these are the Abyssinian lashes from Feline Lashes, and they have that like PC, fluttery 1960s look, which is obviously perfect for this makeup concept. Um, then I'm going in with the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer. Look at that. Oh my god. The best thing about it is that it's the most finely milled highlighter I've ever tried. So it literally looks like you're just light is coming out from the places that you apply it. Um, it's never chunky and it's never glittery. It's honestly just beautiful. One of the most underrated highlighters. Then I'm going in with the Wet n Wild Lip Liner. Um, it's a gel lip liner. You guys have seen me use it in my first impressions video and I was obsessed with it. Low-key, I use it like almost every single day. And it's the perfect shade for this Smashbox Be Legendary Liquid Pigment in Bad B. I think that this would be the perfect nude for people with darker skin. It's like a really nice tawny pink shade. Now me, obviously, because I'm pale, it looks really, really pink. But uh, it's a really versatile, beautiful shade and I think it worked really well with the yellow. And there it is, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me relive a time in which I never lived in, the 1960s. Um, it's the time I wish I lived in. If you did, make sure that you leave me a thumbs up because it's so encouraging for me and it helps my channel out so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.